nine months, nine and, months ten. and ten days. I could tell you exactly. <laughs> she was born nine months and ten days. Because I had a very uh, uh, intricate part of, of that. Uh, uh, we were uh, we were putting up hay, and and uh, that's a hard job. Uh, really hard job and you need the younger mm -hmm. people that uh, that uh, you know can lift the bales and everything and and this was uh, in, uh, in in the summertime because uh, when she was born we were up uh, we were at on our uh, first crop of hay which is the most important one and she went into labor uh, at, at night and uh, it's probably maybe around 12, 1 o'clock or something like that. Uh, I took her to the hospital in Norton, which was 11 miles away. Well, of course, I wasn't there the next morning to go to the field. And uh, they just, uh, they were really upset about that. But anyway, that was a great experience. Uh, Back then, uh, the regulations were a lot different than that. We had a, a country doctor that did everything, and one doctor, and, and he did everything. And so he, he asked me uh, when she went into labor, into pretty heavy labor, uh, if I wanted to be in and help. And I said, well, yeah, I'd like to do that. And so, uh, he said, well, when I went in there, he says, uh, you have one big responsibility and that's you're going to control the ether. And so you had a, <laughs> you had like a screen, like a, 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 a screener and uh, with a cloth over it and you had an ether can in the other hand and uh, you had that over her face and you put that over her face and as you thought, uh, depending on the number of the amount of sound that came from her, uh, you decide on how much ether you're going to give her. So that's the way it was. And so I was in there, and uh, I gave her the ether, and she was in. She was in quite a while for the birth. He gave me the ether, and he gave me so much. I had no idea when she was born because I had no pain or nothing. She just was born, you know. And uh, so I didn't get, when I finally came to, <laughs> so I knew what was going on, and they brought her to me, and she was so cute. She had a whole head of dark hair, and they'd put a curl on top, and she was so beautiful. And his mother did come up that evening to see her. And, of course, Bill had to go back to the fields and work, but... Uh, I was with her till it was about four o'clock in the afternoon then. I think that was about yes, that. And so then I went home and, and went to the field and uh, my uh, greeting was not very well. Uh, they said, we don't, do not understand why you took an important day like this off uh, when we needed you and uh, no other husband that we know of, and none of them there ever takes her, their wife or, or does has anything to do with that. Uh, that's her job, to have the baby. They didn't, did not need you there. You need to be here. And so we did not have a real good uh, uh, conversation from there on. And uh, that was part of the problem with me. I never really got over that. Uh, I carried that uh, with me and I said, you know, I don't want to be a part of this the rest of my life. You know, my family is very, very important to me and I'm going to be there when I think I need to be there and I'm not going to be dictated to on that. Yeah. And, I wasn't aware that his dad was quite that upset, although I know he didn't come to see her in the hospital at all. because So he, he evidently was very upset that Bill had missed a day of work. And she was born in the hospital, and we came to the conclusion that her name was going to be Patty Jo because the first year that we that we were married, and, and I had a little girl named Patty Jo, which is, was one of my cousins, um, and Bill just adored her. 
He used to even pick her up when he'd come out to school and carry her around. She was little, and so he liked that name, Patty Jo. So that's how she came to be known, known as Patty Jo. And that's the most I remember of it because then when I got, I wasn't in the hospital very long, longer than they are nowadays. So they just kick you out almost immediately. As soon as you have your baby, then you go home, you know, and. So this, that was a new experience for me. And as for Mickey, if she was born in 54, Mickey came along in 56. And I told him when he was in there with that ether again, I said, do not give me so much ether. I kind of want to know. And I was able to help push. You know, you, got, you need to be able to push to, unless you're just going to be in labor forever, you know, because I had a long labor with Patty, which Mickey, when he finally decided to come, uh, he came real fast. And we weren't in the hospital very long until he was there, you know, because he didn't give me quite so much ether, and I was able to help. He didn't have a pretty curl on top of his head, though. <laughs> I think he was pretty bald, wasn't he? Yeah. I'm bald. <laughs> yeah, pretty bald. Well, as a child, Patty was very independent. Didn't like, she liked to be down, down walking and doing her own thing. And I think she is pretty private, even still, pretty independent. But we were always very close. We used to talk a lot, uh, a lot more than we do now, because now she's got her grand, her daughter that she talks to all the time. Or if you call, you don't know which one you're going to get on the phone, no matter whose phone it is. It'll happen to be the person that is not driving, if they're driving, but they do lots and lots of things together. And even working at school together now that Patty is retired. But uh, very independent. My sisters, and I have four sisters, they wanted to pick her up and carry her around. And she didn't want any part of that. She wanted to be independent and down on the floor and go, you know. So that was her personality. <laughs> she just didn't like to be held. Mickey was just the opposite. Patty is still more uh, independent. She does give hugs and kisses now, where uh, she didn't really like that part of it when she was little. Patty was, uh, was an excellent student and uh, the teachers, uh, and she, she had a really good personality, and she was very petite, <laughs> and uh, uh, everything had to be just right. And the teachers uh, really appreciated that. And uh, we had, some of our teachers were, were very, very good friends, but uh, she, she would never make a mistake on that. It was always Mrs. or, well, it was all Mrs. because we didn't have any men teachers down there. And they thought that was kind of unusual because we called them by their first name, but not her, ever. Even no matter, even if they were over at our home or wherever it was, uh, she kept it proper. And uh, we were always pretty proud of her for that. And, but she was an excellent student too. She did a, a, did a couple things that, uh, as a, a real small child, uh, that I think about. We had some really close friends in, uh, uh, in Emporia, uh, out in the country, and uh, we would go out and visit them. And uh, she was, uh, she couldn't have been more than like three or four years old. And so she was free to go out in the yard and everything out there. So uh, the, the, this friend, uh, saw her out there one time and and uh, she had uh, taken the uh, the pan of milk that they had set out for the dog and was drinking it and so that that lasted for for quite a while on uh, them telling us that uh, you know next time that uh, that she wants some milk which will be just come on out uh, we'll let her have it <laughs> In other words, uh, you know, we didn't take care of them and we didn't give her milk. And so that was, that was just an incident that, uh, that it was funny now, it wasn't then. And then with her, when she was younger than that, uh, we lived in a, in the summertime, we lived in a, in a, a real tiny two-room uh, house in Emporia. And we had a, a bachelor and he was pretty old that lived next 
door and he was sprinkling his yard uh, the, the grass and and she uh, she got outside and uh, took all of her clothes off and went over and played in the sprinkler and he thought that was uh, really something neat to see and so kids do things like that and you know it's, it's fine but uh, at, at the time you're usually embarrassed and, uh, <laughs> and very... hope that that wouldn't happen but later on it, uh, it becomes a, a funny thing and something that you just don't forget. Yeah. Uh, now she came home carrying her clothes he was, and he was following behind her just laughing his head off me because she was soaking wet, so she just took them off. Yeah, when Patty was small, uh, I was very uh, protective of her. <laughs> uh, she, Valida had uh, very young sisters uh, that were uh, probably not in school yet, maybe, even, mm -hmm. and one of them, uh, had been a baby, you know, with ten kids. Uh, she was the baby, and she was spoiled. And she did not like Patty very well because uh, she was Patty was getting all of the attention because she was a really cute baby with uh, long black hair, and and so when we would go to her parents. Uh, her sisters would be there, and uh, well, the whole family would be there, and uh, and uh, Patty was made over all the time, and her little sister was left out, and so I uh, I I watched Patty uh, very very carefully, and and later on in years, uh, her next to youngest uh, next to oldest sister to her. Uh, said, you know, it was probably a pretty good thing that you did uh, protect her back then because uh, the little sister uh, would have done some damage to her had you not done that. And I picked that up right away. And so, so I became pretty protective. And as they got older, uh, I kind of started letting letting loose and maybe I was a little bit too protective with her, I don't know, but uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's something that I think parents do uh, when, they, when they think that, they're, that their child may be in danger on that. And Patty was the baby and we had a babysitter for her and I would pick her up after when I returned from school each, each night. One night, and of course he slept in the daytime, but after classes he would go to, go to sleep. And one night when, I, when we came in, there was a note on the bed that says, Patty, you little knucklehead, don't wake me up. Because <laughs> that was the first thing she would do. Because we had this little basement that we lived in. Well, we had the whole basement. And it was basically one room with a real small kitchen. So your bed was in one end, your table was in the other end. And she would just head for that bed the minute she came through that door to have a night. Jump right on top of me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Patty made this uh, Tree, uh, Every tree, I guess whatever whatever it's called, and it was up to Daisy Parker's up there, and uh, but he's probably probably not after him. I don't think Jeremy's. No great grand, yeah, Jeremy's up there, but the none of the uh, none of the great grandkids to. around there. We just didn't keep it up. So they gave it to us, Patty and Jim. Beautiful. Yeah, it is. It's, it's nice, quite a piece of nice to have. Yeah. yeah.